really just a full breakdown, you know, everything that you need to learn. Basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems and programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Deal Desk. I'm really excited for our guest today. He's a killer. Um, I'm going to bring him up here in a second. But before we get started, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Basically, the way this works is you can head over to the rei2box.com. You click on Submit Leads to be called live on the Deal Desk. And uh, the guest calls them live, right? Um, they'll try calling them twice. If they don't pick up the first time, They'll try one more time. If they don't pick up, they're going to move on to the next lead. And that's basically it. You know, that's uh, rules are very simple, but it's not too late. So if you have any leads you wanted to be called live, head over there right now, uh, submit the leads, and we'll get started. This is episode seven. We have a special guest today. His name is Nick, a.k.a. Flip King. He's based out of California. Let's bring him right up. What's going on, man? How you doing? Yo, yo, what's going on, Steven? How we doing today? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for hopping on here and joining us. There's been a lot of buzz. You know, there's been a lot of buzz with uh, other similar challenges going on. You know, I want to start off with that. I mean, the, you, we've already been done closer Olympic stuff, but now you got all these other things. Um, and I actually heard and I, I actually saw that you you and RJ went kind of head to head in this speed to leak. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I mean, everyone's heard of the Closer Olympics, and I think that's where this uh, this live calling and competition style format yeah. was, was. I think you know pretty much they, they were the first to do it. We were both on the first round; you you were on the second. Uh, and so I think we're, it all started with R, RJ and myself matched up in the first round of the first ever Closer Olympics, and him and I, you know, uh, were messaging each other after that first round and said, "Hey, look, yeah. you know, if this thing were formatted differently." In the first closer Olympics, you and I would have been in round two and three and possibly the finals matched up head to head because, um, you know, but unfortunately, due to the formatting of that first closer Olympics, right? We're not going to get too much into detail. Yeah, interesting that. formatting. Yeah, interesting formatting. Yeah. Um, so, nevertheless, he said, hey, we got to run it back. You know, we got to run it back at some point here in the future. Yeah. Both respect each other as far as the skills, what we bring to the table. And we also wanted to put something together for the audience. I know people that are on here are new to the game. They're trying to improve their skill. They're just trying to, you know, uh, you know, catch a nugget or two that they can implement into their, uh, you know, acquisition team or their acquisition managers or just themselves. So we ran it, and um, I came out victorious. Uh, and, and if you guys are watching, you can YouTube that thing. It's yeah. it's on YouTube live, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for everybody to view. But came out victorious and. Uh, here we are today. Dang, dethrone, dethrone the uh, defending champion, huh? Dethrone the yeah, dethrone the closer <laughs> Olympics 2022 or 21 champion, whatever it was. No, but man, like, so tell me a little bit more about um, like your background, like people that the first time they're hearing, like, who is Nick? Where does he come from? How do he get in the game? How is he so good on the phones? So I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna do this really quickly because I know everyone wants to jump to the calls and everything like that. But um, I started off like, man, coming from like a very traditional, traditional Hispanic family where you're just like taught. And my parents both, you know, were the first to go to college in their um, in their families and whatnot. So that was just instilled in us at a young age. So I knew I'm going to school, or you're kicked out of the family, basically. Mm. So I thought, hey, go to school get good grades after college, you know, apply and get that high paying job and did that graduated from San Diego state. And I think what kind of hit home for me was I saw a lot of people graduating back in, this is 2013, 14 and with degrees and they weren't getting jobs. And a lot of them were, you know, graduating working jobs that didn't even require that specific degree. So yeah. I got introduced um, as a senior in college, six months before graduation to the network marketing industry. And that's where it all began. The network marketing, a lot of people, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, like the Herbal Lifes, the, the Mary Kays, the Avons, those type of uh, Metaluca. And essentially, I got introduced to sales. I got introduced to personal development. I got introduced to mentors. I got introduced to just building a team of salespeople. And 
Uh, fast forward, I dove into that industry in 2000, end of 2014, right around my senior year, six months. And I built a team of over 5,000 5, distributors across the country. Wow. Um, and 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 uh, it got it, it got so big that we started going to different countries, and, it, and you know my team was in like 15 different countries at one point. So I'm a 22, 20, I'm sorry, 23, 24, 25 year old guy traveling the world, um, essentially speaking on stages and selling products. And I think that that's where um, the skill set was built because I had uh, mentors teaching me, you know, how to sell. I was speaking on stages in front of hundreds and thousands of people public speaking. And a lot of the stuff that I was doing was belly to belly. So if you ever got belly to belly, you, you've got to be sharp and, and intuitive and, and ready to rock and roll. So yeah, you gotta um, be. yeah. So for me, it was network marketing. And I think I got to a point where um, I guess you could say I was a little bit, I wanted more, you know, I was, I was kind of, you know, exhausted of sleeping on sleeping in hotel rooms and traveling. It, it kind of just, it exhausted me a bit. And I said, you know what? I saw an infomercial and this is a funny and true story for everybody who's watching. I was on YouTube and I saw an infomercial uh, for a webinar, right? Now everybody and their mom is doing webinars, right? And free trainings and, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I saw one, this is back in 2016, maybe it's about 17 ish. And uh, it was talking about real estate when investing into real estate with no money down none of your own credit, none of your own cash and sign up for this free web class. Mm -hmm. And I put in my information, I signed up for the webinar and I was taking notes and they were talking about wholesaling real estate. And, you know, I think one of the guys on there uh, was showing checks of like 20,000, 30,000, 60,000 wholesaling real estate. And I said, you know what? I have this skill set that I you know, over the past four and a half years in the network marketing industry was, was one of the top distributors for that company. What if I just put this skill set into a bigger vehicle? So instead of selling a $500 product, right, 100, 200,000 times, why don't I just put that same skill set and that same energy into brokering a deal where you're now you're selling a $500,000 product or a million dollar product? Mm -hmm. Same, same energy. Same skill set, um, and and so I, I just saw the vision of what could happen when you when you put your energy into selling a bigger product, brokering a bigger deal, because you can't make a hundred thousand dollar commission off a five hundred dollar product. Nope. So um, you know I got involved in in, in wholesale and real estate, and uh, my first thirty days, and I'm not going to get into the story unless you want to hear it. It's a pretty long story, but I was able to wholesale a deal and make $90,000 within my first 30 days of getting into real estate. Wow. It takes some people a longer time than that. You know what I'm saying? And was this in Cali? Yeah, this was in California. This was in uh, a place called La Puente, California. La Puente. What do you tell people that, you know, they say, oh, Cali's too competitive. There's no deals, you know, but you're actively doing this in Cali. You know, what do you tell people like that? Because Cali, the spreads are bigger. These com competitive, quote unquote, competitive markets, right? Yeah, I'm going to tell you this. Every market is competitive. That's what I truly believe. Uh, and for us, we believe in, you know, and, and I tell this to like all of our students and everybody who that we're interacting with. The reason why our company is able to do such a tremendous amount of volume is because we're in several different metropolitan markets across the country right around seven or eight different markets across the country. And so that allows us to, you know, bank on a tremendous amount of volume and do multitude of deals every month. But as far as like California, uh, it's just as competitive as any market in the country. And, you know, for us, I love the fact that it's such a hot market because um, investors, um, hedge funds are paying top dollar for these properties. Mm -hmm. So in other markets where you have to maybe be at a certain ballpark, where you have to, you know, sell it for seven, you know, you're normally going to sell 70% of ARV to a, to an investor or cash buyer in California, certain parts of LA, more specifically, that number is getting to like 80 hedge funds, 85% of ARV, 78%, you know? So uh, I think you just got to up your skills and obviously consistent marketing 
and and understand that every market across the country is competitive. Atlanta, Georgia is competitive. Dallas, Texas is competitive. Uh, Florida, you know, uh, is, is competitive. Every market is competitive. Las Vegas is competitive. Phoenix, Arizona is competitive. But the guys are still doing deals. Yeah. So don't let that um, don't let that seep into your head if you're out there. I love that you said that because I I believe that where there's competition, there's a demand for whatever service you're providing. You know, so that that's awesome, man, and it's great. It's, uh, to know that you came from network marketing, because that's actually where I started myself. My very first sales was network marketing. Then I did door to door. Then I got into a cold calling company. But if you take that same energy, same principles, apply it to a different service, it's crazy what the results are like 10x. So that's awesome, man. So what does your um, what does your business look like today? And what what, what what's your next goals? You know, like where do you see yourself in the in the future with your company? Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I'm so lucky because I basically had a business, I had a, a previous business partner and I, what I was able to do was take that business and we did a crazy amount of volume deals, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals. I was able to take that business and then create a, essentially a brand new business and cut my overhead in half by 50% and do this same amount, if not more volume. Uh, because, you know, I learned over the past, you know, three, four years on, on what positions I needed in house, what's, which was I could outsource and then how to set up this crazy marketing machine. So right now, today, myself, a brand new business partner, uh, three acquisition managers, uh, 20 virtual outbound telemarketers, cold callers, um, and one transaction dispo manager, uh, one marketing manager. And uh, that's how we're rolling today. Yeah. I love it, man. That's awesome. So, and I know you, you must have a strong acquisitions team because you, you got to be good at something before you kind of, you know, delegate that position, right? Especially acquisitions is, and you're doing this virtually hundred percent virtually. Yeah. So we, I, I don't remember the last time I physically walked a property. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals that we closed. Uh, we probably, physically been to about, you know, I think 98% of the deals were virtual 2%. We had to actually go to the property. I only go to properties that we're actually going to physically purchase yeah. or the properties that I'm considering holding as a rental, but, um, seven, eight different metropolitan markets across the country. And, um, everything is 100% virtual. As far as what we do here in the office is we have the most, I don't want to call them the most important positions, but the positions that I want to see the people day to day. So all the acquisition managers are in house. We like to see. We want to work with them each and every single day. Uh, we want to make sure that you know, you know, go through. Uh, actually, a couple of them are behind me right now, listening in. But but we, we want to make sure that we spend time with them each and every single day. There they are, right there, listening in. Um, yeah, you have so, no killers over them, man. You, I saw you. You posted something about two hundred k plus in the pipeline. We you know? we do in volume. You know yeah. what I mean. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that we're doing this year, as opposed to what I. Uh, from the past is looking for more opportunities to flip, to flip, and not just wholesaling everything. Mm. Right. I think uh, our goal this year is right around 15 to 20 uh, flips and that can go up. It can go down, but that's just our goal. And I think, you know, flipping these things, especially the ones here in LA yeah. is just going to uh, increase our revenue tremendously. That's awesome, man. So, I know when you did this thing with RJ head to head, it was four hours. Today is only what <laughs> three minutes. Um, but before we hop on these calls, I mean, where can people reach out to you, get to know you a little bit better? Do you have any events, any courses, any uh, you know, any any kind of education on anything that you want to um, you know talk about? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. I think the best one is going to be Instagram. You know, uh, mm -hmm. over the past four to five years, and I think this is for a lot of investors like yourself, Steven, myself, and a lot of other colleagues around the country, you know, at least my philosophy is building a business uh, and not uh, with and great sales, great systems and processes and salespeople. And, and I think that over the past several years, I've been able to do that. And so what happens is as your business is running with great salespeople and the right systems and processes, what happened for me is it creates time freedom. Uh, to be able to uh, deploy into other avenues. And one of the avenues is coaching and consulting. I think a lot of us do it because we have businesses that are producing with or without us at such a high level. 
So we have the time freedom to be able to invest into people and get them to where they want to be. And so I do offer a range of different, you know, high level coaching and consulting, um, you know, mid range coaching and consulting, very few like entry level type of stuff. But the best place is going to be Instagram at Flip King. Um, and then also on Facebook, Nick Lovano, um, reach out to me. I have a team that it's highly monitoring my direct messages to make sure that we get back to everybody. And that's going to be the best way. And then obviously, um, let's stay on the lookout for YouTube. I think, you know, I know Stephen, you, uh, you know, I've seen your channel develop and especially with the show that you put together incredible, you know, I was watching some, some of the episodes last night, love what you're doing. Uh, so excited to be on here today. So definitely look, be on the lookout for YouTube as well as, Yep, I've said it. TikTok. Be on the lookout for that as well. Oh, <laughs> Be on the lookout for 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 uh for TikTok. And, and what's crazy is I looked up, I got on that thing. I don't know how to use it. Um, I'm still learning, but it's a powerful tool. Tell me about it. Yeah. So I was I was just trying to get my username at Flip King. And it's <laughs> yeah. essentially it's taken already by like a like a six-year-old kid. I don't even know. It's like a kid on there. So uh, we'll we'll figure out the username. I think it's gonna be Nick Lovano, but we'll figure it out. Gonna be busting some dance moves on there or what? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't, how are you running it? Are you new to it as well? I'm new to it as well. I, I I'm not using it as it should be used, but I plan yeah. on definitely uh, working on that. Okay. So, but if TikTok's a great platform if used correctly, but uh, definitely looking forward to that. That'd be interesting, man. Yeah, we'll see. And and then obviously, so yeah, TikTok and probably YouTube on the way, but best thing is Facebook and probably Instagram is like the go-to, you know, yeah. I think it's the most, you know, for me, easiest to be able to connect with people and then just kind of rock and roll from there. Awesome, man. Well, you ready to get started? No, yeah, I'm 100% ready. And hopefully um, I'm going to actually get a, I'm going to put this on my Instagram because do you, do you, Steve, do you some, some Q&A as well at some point during this thing? Yeah, we do Q and at the end. So if you guys are tuning in, uh, thanks for bringing that up. I see some questions already. Make sure you guys drop any questions uh, that you may have for Nick, and we'll answer it towards the end. Okay. I keep this about an hour. I don't do this for four hours. If we go a little bit over time, that's all right. I want to respect his time as well, um, as well as my own time. But I try to keep around an hour. So you guys have any questions throughout? Drop any questions you may have about anything, and we'll get to it. Um, but that's it, man. So let's get started here. Oh, last thing before we make, get started. The show is free. The only thing I ask for people is just to like and subscribe and share if you're enjoying this, okay? I'm looking forward to see what Nick can do. So the first lead we got is uh, this is in New Jersey. The ones from New Jersey are always interesting. Manny was on the show. He got chewed up in New Jersey, but he handled it very well. Uh, this property is vacant. So let me pull it up. You got the, the phone number there? Yeah, you're talking about uh, number 38? Yeah, number 38 on uh, Let's Leaks, whatever. New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first name is uh, seller's last name, seller's last name, seller's. I, have, I see two columns with seller's last name, seller's last name at the top. But I, I, I'm assuming Robert, Eric is handling the property. I'll just give him a call. I, I believe his name is Eric. Yeah. Eric. Can okay, you go ahead and uh, ring him real quick and, and see what's what's happening as you pull that up? See if we can get him. And and for anybody, like if you, if we're, you know, I've I've done this a couple of times live. If you have a specific question, you know, I'm 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 more than happy to mute as the seller's talking and answer your question live and do a little bit of multitasking. Because I think uh, you know, for for in the past experiences, I got a bunch of messages when I did the one, uh, the episode with RJ, people were just, um, love like the in-between type of situations. Yeah. Yeah. People love that. And if you get to a part where like you get to a contract or if they refer a number to you, I'll mute you just to keep their information confidential for whoever submitted the lead to. Okay. Sounds good. Let me go ahead and give him a call right now. Let's see. Got some grass on the roof over here, man. In the gutters. Oh yeah, it's, uh, six, thirty-seven, forty-four. This is Eric. Property address. Let's. Seven, three, two, six, six, seven. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna try calling it again because it's not ringing. You may need to move on to the next if it doesn't ring. Uh, yeah, for some reason it's not uh, buzzing through. All right, let's move on to the next one then. Uh, we're still in New Jersey. We're in Glen Rock. All right, we got here. Oh wait, getting a call back. Here you go. Good morning, this is Nick. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hi is this Eric? Yes, yes. Hey, 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 good afternoon, Eric. This this is Nick. I was actually, I think I just missed your your call me back. I was, I was reaching out about your property here on Let's Boulevard. Does does that ring a bell by chance? Yeah, Nick. Yeah, my name is Nick. I'm, I'm a local real estate investor in the area. I believe someone, one of my team members had contacted you. You might have filled out a form online. Uh, it says here that you were possibly looking to sell uh, one of your properties here on Let's Boulevard. I think 117 Let's Boulevard. Does that ring a bell by chance or possibly have the wrong number? Something on your website came up. Why? Yeah, so, so essentially, I believe one of my assistants had reached out to you. In regards to your property, uh, and 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 maybe I'm I'm I have the miss I don't have the right information, but did you have an interest in possibly selling your property, one one seven Let's Boulevard, or or am I mistaken to have the wrong number? It's not you. Yeah, no wrong number. Okay, so that does that property ring a bell at all? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, no no worries at all. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You have a, yeah yeah yeah. I'm I'm a local private real estate investor. Yeah, no no company. Just a local guy in the area looking to buy a couple of different properties. But if you're if you're not if I have the wrong number, I do um, you know, apologize and you have a wonderful day. Okay, Eric. Okay, talk to you some more. Okay, you got him off quick. Yeah, I mean it's just like and again I said a lot of times I'm not gonna give a company name, right? Especially when it's a wrong number. So I'm a local private real estate investor in the area. You know, long story short, that's just the kind of go to. It was the wrong number. That one was uh, number thirty eight. Yep. Let's see. Get somebody at 906 This is um, Salzac. It's a Salzac? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Sl Slazak? Slazak. Hello? Hey, good afternoon. Uh, I was, is it Maria by chance? Hi, my name is Nick. I was reaching out to you guys about the property here on Rock, Rockingham Place. Does that does that yes. ring a bell by chance? Yes, that's my listing. Okay. Oh, that's your, that's your listing? Yes. Okay, so that one is currently on the market right now? It is on the market right now. Oh, yes. okay, nice. nice. I'm a local real estate investor. I buy properties all throughout the area. We uh, have multiple offers. Multiple offers already. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. No, no worries. You have a wonderful day, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So that one is currently on the market. And I think that might have been an agent. So we're going to move to uh, North Carolina. Let's see if we can get somebody who's actually um, not the wrong number or not on the market. This one's in North Carolina. And again, guys, if you're super new out there, can't do anything, multiple offers, and it's on the market. We're not doing anything with that bad boy. Bulen, Bulen, William. Your call has been forwarded. So no answer. We're gonna ring again. Let's see if we can get somebody on the phone here. Where's the next one at? Detroit. Everybody out there, smile. I'm gonna ring them a third time. Let's just see if we can create some type of momentum. I'm 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 notorious for um, the three in a row. And if you're out there doing three in a row, yeah. hey, good afternoon. Is this William? Yes. Hey, hey, William. This is Nick. I was actually reaching out to you about your property here on Maxine. Does that ring a bell by chance? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I own it. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I think I, be, I believe one of my assistants had reached out to you, and I, I'm looking at a note here it says you might have a, might have some possible interest in selling. Does that sound familiar? Ring a bell? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to sell it. I'm okay. Great. Great. Well, I'm glad I, I'm glad I called you. I'm, I obviously buy property all throughout the area. Um, is is now, William? Is this one in, in pretty good shape, or do you, think, do you think it might need some work here and there? Structurally, everything else is pretty good shape. I mean, I'm looking right now. I'm just going to fix it up. Right, I was getting ready. Yeah, he's, he's painted, and I was going to put new appliances in. You know, refrigerator, stove. Get started on Straighter Smile today. Okay. Basically, yeah. okay. The bathrooms are good shape. Uh, the walls, but you know, that's that's what I was going to get ready to do. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. And is this one is this one vacant or is it occupied right now? No, the lady just moved out, and I believe uh, she moved out uh, into January, and. Uh, so uh, she's been in it. She was in it for I bought. She was in it for like 18, 20 years. Oh wow! Yeah, so she's a good renter. So oh nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, that makes total sense. And obviously, I know you said you were gonna you were planning on putting some work in it. I'll tell you, just I'll, I'm a kind of straight shooter. Sounds like you are too. How I work is I pretty much buy property in as its condition. You know what that means for you? you no know, fixing, repairing, maintenance, commissions, things like that. Uh, you know, I, the way I buy them is I, I buy them just the way they are. It doesn't cost you a penny. I pay all the fees and right. housing costs. Did you, I mean, if, if something like, would something like that possibly interest you? I mean, and, and if if it does, um, I mean, as far as, I, a, go ahead. You're, you're the fourth person that wants to call me about buying this. I have no idea how you guys know the substance of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, we have, I, you know, we, 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 we're, we're, we're one of those companies out there that is, is heavily right. looking for investment properties to purchase. You know, normally we, we fix them and rent them um, just like you. And so I wanted to reach. I'm, on, I'm one of the owners, by the way. So I wanted to reach out, introduce myself. And I guess just see where you were and see if you had plans or what you were specifically looking to do. If you did do something, did you have like a price or a range or a ballpark in mind? Right. I, 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 I had a, I, one guy, I told him, I, I said, I'm going to get one. I, I, he wanted to, uh, he said 115. I said, you give me 120 and I'll get it as is. Because uh, 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 I was going to... Uh, uh, and if I said if I don't get 120 out of it, I'm gonna de deal with it myself. It gets right now. The house is a, it's a corner lot. It's a it's got a great great room um, with, a, with a fireplace, with the ceilings. You know, in the living room, I know it's a beautiful place. I, it was my first house I bought when I was a young captain in the army back in 19 what, 1984. Mm -hmm. so I, I bought the place in 1984, so uh, the mm -hmm. house was built in '70. Mm -hmm. I think it was. So that's what it was. But it's in good shape. It's a corner lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you know if you've done real estate, uh, I've sold. Between my dad was a contractor, and he said he was. Uh, I got an RV about one eighty five. I've had twenty two rentals. One twenty is the cost of an RV. Eight years, but I, what I've known is it's about location, location, location. Oh yeah, yeah, you're absolutely this, positively right. This, and this is this, this well, house is in a very good location, right on, not too far from Bank Fort Bragg. So whoever gets this is not gonna have problems selling. Yeah, no, no worries. And for us, I'll tell you the way that we work. Like I said, we normally purchase and then we add value and we normally hold for a rental. So we're, we normally don't even flip it like a pancake like you're talking about. It's a kind of a different, yeah. a little bit of a different strategy. But let me ask you this, William. I know that you said that and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I can, um, but but if I could and you said, you know, if I could be at the one, two, zero number like you have you know, requested, um, are you saying you'd pretty much be ready to go today as far as me sending you over a preliminary purchase agreement, you initially get and getting the whole process started? Yes, it, 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 that's what I wanted to get. You know, just, I'm in, from my, from right now, I'm in, a, uh, I live in Ohio. Is that Airbnb so 185? It's about Before a you know, know, six and a half hour drive. So, I mean, I do go down there. I go down there and, and fix stuff up. So it's about a six and a half hour drive. Oh, no, there. okay, that, that makes total sense. I'll tell you what, what what's your best email, William? I, I have a computer right here. Um, you know, my okay, goal is... Go, go go ahead. I'm ready. Dot Bulen, B U L E N. Dot B. Hotmail dot. So here, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell you this, William. Um, you know, the way that we work is, is very, very simple. Um, and I, I, it sounds like you've been, you know, Probably caught you on a great day. Sounds like, you know what I mean? We, we, you sound like a straight shooter. You know, we buy all throughout the area. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draft up a two-page agreement. And if you say that you're ready to go at the 120 number, um, you yes. know, I, I, and, uh, go ahead. And, 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 and there's no more return at all. And it's fast to get the, uh, the attorney there 
uh, to, to uh, get the paperwork, verify the uh, title and everything, it'd be yours. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on one second here. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, here's here's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. I'm looking at the numbers here. I'm looking at I'm I'm, I'm just you know going back and forth here via text with my partner. Uh, I'll tell you what, William. Uh, we can do it. We can make it happen for you at the one two zero number. Um, for us, you know, uh, what we're gonna do is I'm in the process right now of drafting up a a two page preliminary purchase agreement. I'm gonna tell you what it says. So we don't waste any time because some of you know exactly what you want. What it states is we're purchasing the property and as its condition. So what that means is no fixing, no repairing, no maintenance, no real estate commissions. We're going to cover 100% of all the fees. Um, and, you know, as far as closing, what we do is once the purchase agreement is initialed by you, I'm going to go hand it, you know, hand, you know, email it over to the escrow and title company. They're going to run a title report, usually takes between seven and 10 business days to come back. And then obviously they're going to get in contact with you and let, and let you know what information that they need. Um, and it's a very, you know, simple uh, and straightforward process. You know, we buy uh, about a hundred houses a year, so it's not our first rodeo. And you know, obviously, we're, you know, we can we can make it happen for you. Last question before I send this over to you, William. Are you the only one on title right now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you are the main decision maker. You're the only one on right. title. Well, I'm married, but my wife she doesn't deal with the real estate. <laughs> uh, and you said you live kind of far from the park. Where do you live? I live in a. Backyard is the highway. Oh wow, love and and this I have to ask you. It was this one. Did you just buy it back in the day, or was it a rental for you? How'd you come across this one? Well, I, I, I was in the army for thirty years. I'm a retired full colonel. Uh, when I was a second lieutenant, or now I was a captain in 1984. Uh, I, I grew up in Iowa. I went to Fort Ross in the seventies. Exactly. It up. So I was stationed at Fort Bragg twice. I was in the eighty second. So my first tour in the eighty second was in nineteen eighty. Four, I bought the house, hmm. and I've had yeah. since then. And I, I lived in it there for two and three years. And I went uh, deployed different places. And I came back, stayed in it again in the nineties for two. Building more years, report, building report, building since. report. Wow, and, and I'll, I'll say this: uh, thank you for your service. You know, I, I think that uh, man, that is that is incredible. I had an uncle that served in the military as well. So, yeah. um, you know, thank you for your service and everything you've done for our country. That is that is incredible. Um, so I'm definitely excited to be able to do some business with you. And, and that's why I told you, you sounded like a straight shooter. So it's, you, you sounded like a the house is in good shape, like a fairly good shape. I don't know if anything's wrong with it. Uh, the lady that lived there, if there was anything wrong with it, she would, she would let us know right away. So, and you said she was there for you, so almost 20 years? Something like that, 23. Her husband, uh, had a, he was a military guy, but he had some kind okay. of disease or something, and then he died there. And uh, a few years ago, so uh, she's kind of, I guess, moved your family, but she was there for a long time. And I, she was, you know, she was a good winner. She paid her rent. And I see some comps. Like I said, if I'll share them. But I saw some comps at what was it, 180? And I never managed 180? We saw comps at 180. Street. We'll share those as well. Her, her so I think it's a little bit higher than real estate company and stuff like that. Uh, and they managed it for the last 20 years. She still has the keys right now. So if you wanted to see it, she had the keys. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and at some point during the process, I'd love to swing by. I'll take a quick peek, grab some pictures. But William, can you do me a favor? Can you check your email? I sent you over an email. I want to just confirm that you got it. I'm right now. Uh, I'm retired and I volunteer at Habitat, but I actually helped build homes for Habitat. Oh wow! In, uh, Incredible. West Virginia. So I'm standing at a home where we're trying to get dedicated here. Uh, let me. I got some work here to do, but some about uh. Do you, do, you, do you by chance have a do you by chance have like an iPhone or an Android like a smartphone? I have. A, I have a, a smartphone here. Can yeah. you? Yeah, because what, what, I just want to make sure that you did receive the email. Um, because sometimes there's glitches, or I misspell it, or put a period or something. Can you, do you? Would you? Would you mind maybe putting me on speakerphone and then just checking your email really quickly to make sure that you got it? Yes, speakerphone. So just put me on speakerphone, and then and then you can go ahead and just check your email on your smartphone. Okay, got you on speakerphone here. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. Just check your email, whatever email you, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's Gmail, whatever it may be. Whatever email that you normally check, you know, daily on your on your smartphone. Oh, you're good. I got I got all day. No worries at all. No worries at all. No worries at all. I'm trying to figure out. Still there? Yep. Yep. I'm here. Okay. I think I need the one that says mail. It's a little. Yep. That's the one. Okay. All right. Messages. It should come from a company called Sign Now. Uh, it's just an. Are you already here? 
Go ahead. Did you, uh, did you send me a message already on my phone? Uh, yeah, it should be directly to your email. Oh, my email. Okay, let me back out of this. Okay. Yeah, no, it should be directly to you. I didn't text you. I just sent you an email. So you can go ahead and check your email on your smartphone. Again, you know, why are we pushing extra hard? It's because we're live on here. Yep, yep, that's yep, that's my partner. Yep, absolutely. So if you can go ahead and click, you can go ahead and click it and it, it will allow you to build. Yep, so that's the one. If you go to the bottom, it will allow you to electronically uh, initial the document and then you press submit and I'll get it back right away. Yeah, so go go to the bottom, and there should be a, 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 a go scroll to the bottom of that document, and there should be a place. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a slide that says view document. There you go, view document. That's the first one. So click that one. And then once you view the document, you're going to scroll to the bottom of it, and you'll see a place that will allow you. It's like, I think it's it's a it's the color blue that will allow you to initial with. You can even sign it with your finger. It's the coolest thing. Okay, then go to the bottom and then uh, click it, and it'll allow you to just initial real quick. Allow me to scroll up. Okay, is this a contract I'm signing? Yeah, so this is the, the yeah, this is a, a two-page preliminary agreement. Doesn't mean you sold anything at all. It just allows us to get the process started, um, which which will take us you know a couple weeks for sure. Okay, uh, so what I'm, not, I'm I'm not obligated right now. Okay. No, no, yeah. If you just yeah yeah, yeah again, if you could if you're able to initial it, it will allow us to get the process started. Doesn't mean you sold anything at all. Yep. Yep. Do I have to scratch anything in? Yeah, you just you just you go to the bottom where it says that there was a, the 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 uh, signature portion, and it's going to allow you to. I'm trying to tap. It. Yep, tap it. Yep. Okay, and I just scratched my initials in here. Yep, right there. Draw your initials. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to press submit. Next, okay. Does it come up? I'm staying out here in the song here. Let's see. So come up there. Once you scratch your initials in there, you're gonna press submit. I don't see the submit. I see a next. Yeah, say next. There it is. Press next. I'm trying to get it. It's not. Let's see. Yeah, if you press, did you press next by chance? Yeah, but it still keeps next here. Mine, my name just went green, so something must. Have... No, right, green. Right. Yep. And then there should be. I think it's on there now. And did you press submit? I still don't see the submit. What does it say submit? Actually, yeah, it's supposed to say like that. There should be something that says done, actually. What does it say on the screen now? It says, I, I'm still seeing the document. I'm scrolling back and forth. And did you already initial it and then press next? Like it's downloaded, but one half requires fields. Do I, I, I probably need to wait till this gets all the way across here? Mm -hmm. right. Yep, it's loading. Yeah. One second, it's loaded up. No worries. Yeah, it says one half required fields, and it's a blue line going across to where it says next. Oh, so just click the blue line, and then it's going to allow you to elect. It's, it's going to allow you to uh, to sign with your finger or type in your name. Well, I already typed in my name. I can see that sellers. I got my name already on it. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And then just press the uh, next or submit. Look at the top. It's usually at the top. Okay. Well, I'm scrolling around. I don't see it. Yeah, scroll to the top. It's usually at the top. Okay. Right? I don't see it. Uh, contract. Take a look at the 
Or scroll, scroll all the way to the top and look in your right hand corner. Okay, there's nothing up there looking at it. Or maybe to the, uh, just check the top and check the bottom. Huh. Is it the top or bottom? Well, Okay, your signature is on there. And is there anywhere at the bottom where it says next or it says submit or it's a, there's a blue button possibly? There is a blue button. I keep tapping the next. And it's... Yeah, tap the next and then just give it a, give it a second. It seems like it's waiting for the signature. Should, should you have to be on it? Is a blue signature field? Let me see here. Is it signed? I'm a seller. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, and did you press submit? Yeah, this one is only for you. Did you already press submit? I, when I when I here's what happens when I push the next, where it says signature field on the buyer, it goes white. When I push the next again, the signature field on yours goes blue. Okay. Where it says buyer. Okay. Yeah. So when I, when I keep tapping the next, it changes the color for the signature field for the oh, buyer. Let's see what's going on. That should be you. His signature's still on. Okay. Do you see? Okay. So, so you basically have to just, so you already signed your name and, and can you look at the top or the bottom and there should be a place that says submit or next. This one, this is only, uh, the blue one is only for your particular signature and you've already okay. done, you've already signed it. So there's some arrow at the top or the bottom that will allow you the ability to just I press. See. Yeah, I don't see it. So Whole Send page. one to Christian real quick so we can page two show. And, two, I see both pages. and then go. To, can you look at the bottom? I'm at the very bottom. There's nothing there. It says at the very end. It says contract for William B. And that's it. Okay. And look at that. What about the top? At the very top, it says contract for William B. And that's it. Hmm. Okay. So, and it, there's nowhere where it says submit. No. Says Weird. Uh, let me see here. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Okay. Well, hold on. Give me one second. I'll be back at my house in a couple hours. If you wanna... Yeah. You know what? I got it figured out right here. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sign it, uh, sign it myself first, and then send you another one real quick. I have, you know, I we I have a little. I have obviously some. I, I do this full time for a living. No, no worries. I'm gonna make it as quick as human. Okay. As quick as human, and I appreciate you working with us, by the way. Um, no you know, uh, one one thing that I one thing that I might recommend doing is, can you try turning your phone sideways? Because if you hold it, if you hold it in such a way where it's up vertical, try turning it horizontally, and it might open up a feature. Now, as you're turning to get horizontally, do you see another feature where it says submit or done or anything like that? You turn it horizontally? Wait, give me a second here. Can you send another one? Sign. Sign by us right now. It's just like you sent it? Yeah. You sent it, sent already? Okay, you know what I went, what I, what I had did is, can you check your email again? I sent you a brand new, uh, agreement, one that's already signed by us. Let's see if it's a little bit okay. easier this way. Check your email one more time. Like maybe just okay. like I just sent you a brand new agreement. Let's see. Okay, uh, I see the brand new one, but there's no signature on your side. They're both empty this time. I'll try it again. This is seller. Yep, my name comes back up again. Maybe it was the old one I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, try. Yeah, try looking at the at the brand new one I just sent you over. Okay, looking at the new one now. Contact sender, view document. There it is. Let's see what we got here. This is what it takes sometimes, guys. You know, most these sellers are not okay. that tech savvy. So uh, your signature's on there. All right. My signature's on there. Okay. There we go. Press the finish. It should be kicking your way. Start, start circling. You got it? Yep. There it is. I just now got it. Okay. Well, great. 
There it is. So William, I'm going to tell you the next step here. Um, and I, and again, I appreciate you working with us. I appreciate you, uh, you know, you know, uh, just, just working with me over the phone. I'm going to go ahead and forward this over to the escrow and title company. Um, I have, is this your best contact number, William? The one I just called yeah, you here. Okay, good. I'm going to go ahead and give you a follow-up call probably on Monday or Tuesday um, and give you all the escrow and title company's information so you have it for your records and for your files. The escrow and title company should probably re will probably reach out sometime next week to give you the next, the next steps. What I'll do is at some point next week as well is probably get you in touch with one of my assistants because I'd love to grab some pictures of the inside of the property sometime next week. And then we'll just go ahead and rock and roll from there, okay? Okay, your name is... Your my name, name is Nick. Is yeah, my name is Nick. And this, this number I called you on, the 626 number, that's my personal cell phone number. So if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, you want to reach me directly, right. you have my personal cell phone number. Okay, you've already sent me an email too. And I've already sent you an email as well. That's the easiest way I like to communicate that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I and you have my cell phone as well. So not to worry at all. Okay. All right, Nick, appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, talk to you soon, William. God bless. Bye. Whoa, man. There it is. <laughs> It took you less than 30 minutes. Congratulations, there you go. This is history, man. I gotta ring this little bell for you right here. This is <laughs> but you are the first guest on the deal desk that have had that got a signed contract live. Uh, mostly everybody got accepted offers, but nobody's pushed. And you know what's crazy is that you kind of guided the guy through. He wasn't as tech savvy as you thought, but you made him feel comfortable. And you influenced him to make the best decision for himself without pressuring the guy. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy, man. That that was great. Good good stuff. Great. Good stuff, there man. Look, there's out. proof right there, too. Look, there's proof, guys. They got the signed contract right there. Let me see if I could pull that up. Signed contract. Oh. Hey, man. Hey, you have, you have any questions, drop them in. Yeah, I saw a bunch of questions. And I think... You know, whoever, I think someone even, I uh, forget who it was. Some, I, I even forgot to have him turn on sideways. Sometimes that works. I think, I mean, normally uh, we we go, I mean, I think, um, I mean, honestly, he was, he was, he was on it, man. He was ready to rock and roll. And um, I think the biggest thing is like the report, you know, he had mentioned, I mean, think about this, guys. He had mentioned that three or four or five people had called him um, yeah. prior, but didn't get the job done. You know what I mean? So a lot of times us as investors, I've noticed this with even a lot of my past students, like you have to, the whole point of this business is to get ink signed. Sometimes, you know, newer acquisition managers, they try and warm them up, warm them up, warm them up, warm them up, but never go for the kill. Never go for the, we're doing it right now, this second, you know, I think sometimes it comes from fear. Sometimes it comes from anxiety. Sometimes it comes from rejection that we feel like, oh, he's never going to sign it. You got to go for the kill because this business um, is black and white, right? It's like, you know, kicking a field goal, right? You either made it or you didn't, right? Someone, it's like, you know, you can't be kind of pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant, right? So you would be, you know what I mean? You either scored the winning touchdown or you didn't, right? You didn't, you know, almost get to see the won the game, you lost the game, hit the field goal, you missed the field goal, and you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. There's no in between. So you guys out there, you got to get to the, you got to, it, it, sometimes, you know, your skills are there. The tonality is there, the convictions there, the sellers there, but you got to be there. And and when's the best time to get the contract signed? Right now, right now, until they give you um, some objection that says, "Hey, look, I'm a little uncomfortable. I don't want to do it right now." Hey, look, I'm at my kid's soccer game. Don't bother, don't bother me right now. Hey, look, um, you know, I got to talk it over with my wife, and I'm not going to make a decision today. If they're not saying that to you, then you push and push and push and push and push. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the name of the game. And I thought of that out there. Forget that. Right. The whole name of the game is getting ink signed here in our office. We have this terminology that says, hey, did you ink? We always talk about ink. What's up with the ink? What's going on with the ink today? The ink today, the ink today. Did we get fresh ink today? Right. And it's either we did or we didn't. And I had a mentor back in the day. Right. That actually um, this was back in the network marketing days. And we had goals just like everybody else. Um, and we wanted to, you know, obviously um, we, our goal was to add new members to our team. So at the end of the week, he says, Nick, um, how many members did you add to your team? So he, we, we'd be in the in a in a in a, in a, in a setting like this, and he'd draw a box on the whiteboard, a box, and the box was pretty small. And he goes, Nick, how many members did you add to your team? The box was so small it could only fit a number in there. 
it couldn't fit excuses. Well, well, we had a challenging week, and uh, yeah. and, uh, 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 and well, well, my I was sick with uh, oh well, my you know, my girlfriend, and, uh, oh well, my dog and my cat and my no, <laughs> the, right. So at the end of the week, you have to ask yourself as a real estate investor, how many contracts did we get signed? And it's a number. It's not an excuse because the box is so small. There's no room for excuses. It's like this thing right here. This is like the old school training. It's just for like the guys out there that are like struggling getting contracts. It's like at the end of each week, you got to be like this. It's like, okay, how many contracts did you get signed? Right? And you know, there's no room for, oh my God, my, my I was sick and I didn't make my calls and then I was blah, blah, blah. No, there's no, you can't type all that in there. It's like, how many did you get signed? Right? Well, three or, you know, five or uh, zero. Right? That's all I want to know is the number. Because like I believe in building your real estate wholesaling business off of data, not drama. And that's data. You know what I mean? And, you know, so if you guys out there, you know, I, I see this all the time. Stop warming them up so much and go for the kill. Yeah. Go for the kill. You know what I mean? Not and the kill is just Matt. If it wasn't for Nick, he's a solid mentor. Shout out from John. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, Steve, do you have any? I know, I mean, you've closed hundreds yourself. I mean, what are your thoughts on just, you know, some, some the stuff that I just shared? What I love what you just shared is that, um, you know, a lot of people that, that they feel uncomfortable getting uncomfortable, right? Like some people don't push enough like that. Somebody else, I feel would have just, you know, oh, I'll call you later. Or they would have wrapped the call up. The guy's talking to you, right? And he said he was like in the middle of something, I think building or something like that. But you still guided him through the process. And when people trust you, you, you built rapport in the beginning. Right. Little things like thank you for your service. I can relate things. You guys can find some kind of common ground. You didn't pressure the guy. It was very smooth. Like it was very, very smooth. Um, and that's, you know, something that some people they're scared to kind of am I going to upset the person? Are they going to say no? Right. Unless, like you said, they're they're screaming at you, say no, whatever, like continue, assume going for the kill. It's what's most important. So, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, I even forgot to mention this. He, he had mentioned to me that he hadn't been to the property for, I think he said six years, something mm -hmm. like that for, he lived six hours away. Maybe he lived six hours away, but he hadn't seen the inside for X amount of time. Yeah. Do you know for a real estate investor, that's, that's, that's like, that's like gold. It's yeah. gold. You know, oftentimes people always ask me, well, how do you get a price reduction? I let the teller, I let the seller give me the price reduction. My best opening on a price reduction is, hey, Mr. Seller, I had a quick question for you. Um, do you remember the last time you've been inside of the property physically yourself? Yeah. Oh, man, I've been there for 10 years. <laughs> oh, OK. That's what I thought. You know what I mean? And then you because yeah. now they're like, man, it's, it's so justified. So I guess my point with this whole thing is that he had mentioned he hadn't been to the inside of the property for such a, month, a great amount of time. So what happens next week when we get pictures of the property? You know, and it's in pretty rough shape, right? You know, if you know, we need a price reduction, you know, and, and we're not going to get greedy with it, but like, you know, once possibly there, because once we get those pictures, I can call him back and say, "Hey, hey, William, I noticed you. I don't. I remember you said you hadn't been inside of the property for a long time. I noticed. That, I, noticed I remember you said the woman was there for twenty years. Do you know the last time you were there and did any like repairs as a landlord? Okay, that's what I thought because, you know, unfortunately, you know, we went in there and we were, you know. We were kind of flabbergasted based off of you know what we anticipated to see based upon what we saw and you know i'm not calling you know what i mean it's just like such an opportunity when sellers have not been inside of their rental properties for so many years right because once we go in there and get pictures because we can't sell the deal until we get pictures right exactly. so once we go and we see those pictures it just opens up an opportunity if we need a price reduction it's there you know it'd be different if he was like yeah i go to the property every six months i make sure that the, it's not tore up i make sure that blah, blah, blah. totally different you know what i mean so there's just, and the guy is like just so open and uh you know i think there was just an incredible amount of just like he was ready to go we hit it off and then boom it's the deal it just was smooth from beginning to end congratulations right. eric this is your deal so we're going to be calling you after i'll connect you with nick um and we'll get that pro star nick you want to answer a few questions before we wrap up yeah yeah um i'll, I'll answer sean's this is an incredible this is a great question Right. Why did you why did you tell the seller he's only signing a preliminary agreement? He signed a contract to sell you to you. Correct. So, uh, Sean, I use that word preliminary 
very loosely. And I told him, hey, it doesn't mean you sold the property, right? It just allows us to get the process started, right? Because I was in such a quick, you know, understand for me, like you got to put yourself in their shoes. Like you only sell a house once every five to 10 years. Maybe you sell five or three or two of them in your whole lifetime for the most average people, right? This is a big decision he's making. He's making it quickly. I just cold called him. Now he's signing his life away. So I want to take a little bit of pressure off of him and just let him know that technically he didn't sell the property. Uh, it just allows us to get the process started, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the wheels are turning and he did sign a legal agreement and he's he understands that. So I just use that preliminary to kind of take a little bit of pressure off of him, but it's still an agreement. And I let him know, hey, this allows us to get the process started. The next step is I'm going to hand it over to the escrow and title company. I'll call you next week, yada, 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 yada. So um, again, it kind of takes a little bit of pressure and we moved quick. You know, getting a contract signed on the first dial like that, um, it happens, but it doesn't happen that often. You know, normally it's like two or three follow-ups, tell me a little bit about your company, yada, yada, yada. So I just want, it happened quick. You know what I mean? He signed his life away quick. That was your third call. <laughs> yeah. You realize that? I think that was your third call uh, on the phone with somebody. So that's crazy, man. Good stuff. Um, let's see. Here's another question. Um, oh, I lost you. Let's, take, let's, let's mix them up. So Eduardo, besides picking up the phone to build experience, how did you build the confidence to guide the sellers into selling their own comfortably and knowing uh, they made the right choice besides the price? Okay, well, okay, let me see. Besides picking up the phone to build experience, how did you build the confidence to guide the sellers into selling their home comfortably and knowing the, they made the right choice besides the price? I think a lot of it uh, had to probably do with um, the way that I was talking in the beginning. And I know all these are recorded, so a lot of you guys might want to go back and watch the recording of that call. Mm -hmm. I mentioned to you, hey, I'm a local, I tried to build credibility to my name. And how I did that was mentioning that I'm one of the owners of the company, right? Uh, for if you're not the owner of your company, you can mention, "Hey, I'm the head manager here at the head manager here at the office." Um, do you want to just build credibility toward your name? Because you have to imagine this: when you go to a restaurant and there's something wrong with your food, you want to. Who does the waiter normally get? The manager. Why do they get the manager? Right? Think about that. Because that's the most highest level. Uh, position at that restaurant that can come in there and make decisions without having to go to somebody else at the GM. So I build credibility toward my name by, you know, letting them know that I'm the owner of the company. Number two, I let them know our process. Hey, you know, we purchase property and as is conditional no fixing, no repairing, no maintenance, no real estate commissions. It's not going to cost you a penny. I cover 100% of the fees and I buy them just the way you see them. Now he's like, man, this guy can talk. He's letting me know the process. It's not going to cost me a penny. And then lastly, I let him know that, hey, look, you know, uh, you know, when he mentioned the price, I said, I didn't commit to it right away. I said, he had mentioned, well, I could do, I think he said 120 or 115. I don't know whatever he said. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm not saying I can do it, but if I could do it, would you be ready to go today? Because I wasn't going to commit to the 120 if he wasn't ready to go today. Right? Yeah. So a lot of times if someone mentions the price, okay, I say, hey, Mr. Seller, I'm not saying that I can do the 105. I got to check with, 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 with one of the owners. But if we could do the 105, are you telling me you're ready to get the process started today? What I mean by that is you're ready to, for me to send you an agreement, you initially get the process. Are you saying that if I could do the 105, you're ready to go and get the thing going today? I never committed to it. Because what if they say, no, 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 no. If I could do the 105, I still got to talk to my wife. I still got to talk to my wife. I said, okay, Mr. Seller, let me do this. Do this, do this. Talk to your wife. I'm going to talk to the owner. And then we'll rendezvous back later this afternoon. You know what I mean? Oh, no, 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 I can't, I can't do the 105 today. I got. I still got to think about it. Okay, Mr. Seller, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say commit to it. Now I'm locked in at that price. I'm only going to commit to it if he's ready to go today. That's exactly what I do. You got to get the commitment on the call. Let's take three more questions. Three more questions. All right? You cool with that, Nick? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. We're, we're perfect. All right. Uh, Nick, how do you deal with leads ghosting? Basically, when you send an agreement or want to set up an inspection, the seller unexpectedly starts ghosting you. How do you manage this is a long question? How do you manage that and try contact them? Um, I love I, I, if we can have more detail. I know that we can't, but I, I think based upon what you've already shared, um, number one, don't take it to the heart. Welcome to the game. You know what I mean? Um, I always tell our team here at the office, 
You're always emotionally invested, but you're never attached mm. to any given leader, any given deal, right? And sometimes when we get this attachment to a lead in a deal, it means because we're low on inventory, right? So if you have, you know, two deals under contract and, or you you sent out two deals and they ghost you, well, 50% of your inventory is gone, right? You have one left. But if you have 10 deals on the board and the seller ghosts you, well, guess what? It's only 10% of your, of your inventory. You have 90% left. So that sounds like you have an inventory issue, a contract issue, um, you know, so if you got to make sure that you, that those numbers, you know, are, are a little bit better. You're not going to be so emotionally attached to any given leader in a given deal. Number two um, is you got to get really resourceful. You know, don't get me wrong. Like if I lose a hundred K spread deal, you know, I'll be a little bit, you know, if they ghost me, it's, I know it's a hundred K spread. I'm gonna be like, man, well, you got to get That's when res- your resourcefulness kicks in, right? Resourcefulness. Okay. Well, if it's, a, if it's a drivable distance, drive to the property. Hey, 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 what's going on? Hey, hey, oh, it's Sean. Hey, it's, it's Nick. How are you? Nick, the real estate investor. Oh, my God. I was just in the area. I, I know that we had been talking about your property here, and I was worried about you. I've been calling you left and right. We had a credible conversation. I was worried about you. I was in the area. I figured I'd swing by. How are you? Mm. you? Know what I mean? Right? Or sending them a, a letter. Or if you're not in the area, it's virtual. Send someone. I used to do this back in the day. If someone ghosted us, I knew it was a good deal. I would send an assistant someone that I knew um, within the area and I would have them go knock on the door. Hey, is this Sean? And then they would, I would be on speaker phone. Hey, 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 this, uh, and they would hand the phone to the seller. I say, Hey, Sean, it's Nick. How are you? The real estate investor. Oh my, my, you know, my assistant Alan was in the area and I had him swing by. I was worried about you. How's it going? You go. Right. And I'm on speaker phone mm-hmm. with the seller. Right. And they're like, Oh my God. They're like this guy. And I go, oh, I'm sorry. I've been sick and I just I haven't been feeling. Okay, no worries at all. No worries at all. I was worried about you and uh, want to get in contact with you and just make sure that you're good. I, I sent the agreement with Alan there. He's going to drop it with you and review it with you so you can initially get the whole thing going, okay? Right? Resourcefulness, right? Resourcefulness. Texting, emailing, calling, switching up the numbers, door knocking it, sending an assistant. Like, how bad do you want to get the deal done? That's all it is, man. I love it. No excuses, guys. Resourcefulness. Find a way. Um, all right. Two more questions. Uh, did you feel that maybe shooting at 110K, 115K offer to get more profit might have affected his decision? Well, this is the what, 70, 60, 70K deal. You said you saw a cash comp for 190. Uh, so what was the cash comp? We had a cash comp. What was the cash comp? I have my guy here running the numbers, so it's a little bit quicker. Okay. Uh, Cause I'm focusing on the conversations, obviously, yeah. you know, uh, but what, what, do, what do we have the cash comp for? I got one for 185. 185? And what else? Any other ones? And then 180. These are fully rehabbed? Oh, fully rehabbed. Fully, fully, so we have cash comps for 180. And what was the other one? 185? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're at a buck 20. Um, typically, if we're at cash comps at like 180, 180, I want to be like 115, 110. I know mm-hmm. we can still make the deal work at 120. You know, it's not going to be a home run of a deal. But I think you, there's a 10K spread there, you know what I mean, depending on the amount of work. And there's always room for that reduction, you know. Uh, I'm not going to fuck up deals in the hopes of always getting reductions. But I, I know for a fact this guy's ready to go. The, the person that was living there lived there for 15 years. And you know, you know, she didn't repair the property, you know what I mean? And he hasn't been there for a long time. So I know for a fact once we get pictures of the property, there's going to be room for that reduction. And I think if there's a cash comp for 195, we could sell this thing for a buck 30. You know what I mean? I think the area looks pretty decent around the neighborhood, you know. Um, and then when did that that cash comp sell recently? 30 days? It was 11, um, November. In November. Run comps, Nick. What's up? What do you use to run comps? How do you run comps on that? Uh, so normally it's MLS and, and prop stream. Okay. Yeah, normally MLS and prop stream. I, I love – and we've ran, we ran, run them before um, with, with uh, Redfin as well, okay. you know. Uh, we use all three. Sure. We use all three, but I, we've we've for sure ran them before with uh, with. I mean, our goal is is the MLS, but unfortunately, in every single market, you're not going to get it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we have MLS access for every single market that yeah. we're in. You know, it's not as easy as uh, it is, right? Yeah, and we used to have we used to be really good at this. Unfortunately, like sometimes, you know, and our our go to with getting the MLS access 
was just making relationships with agents, you know, relationships with agents. And then we let them know, hey, look, can you, can you put us on as uh, one of your assistants? Because they get assistance. If I'm a real estate agent, I could bring on a uh, an assistant and give them MLS access. So they would, we would, they would put us on as an assistant and we cover it. It's usually like 50 bucks a month or a couple hundred bucks a year. And then we, you know, you know, we could kick back to our agents, you know, send them gifts, send them some champagne, send them some 1942, you know, um, kick back any listing that we potentially have in that area. You know what I mean? Because that MLS access is huge, right? And negotiating with cash buyers, you know, um, I oftentimes, yeah, I know that's a whole other side of the business, but you got to know your numbers, you know, and then you don't want to, you don't want to lock up garbage because then you get this, this persona of like, oh, that's the guy that sends me a bunch of garbage. Yeah, you don't want to be you don't you don't want that rep, guys. You don't want to. Rep. All right, last question. Um, let's see, we have a few. Uh, some of the questions here, I mean, he, he kind of answered already. Um, what are the juicy uh, ones? I know someone got some juicy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for some juicy ones. Let's see, comfortable and uh, do this, all right? Um. I'm trying to scroll to the top, see if we, if you see a question you want to answer, let me know because I just see a lot. Uh, let me see here. Sideways. Uh, let me say I think it's the best to have a cyber scene. Uh, what's up? Let me see I'll, I'll look for one. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'll let you pick the last one. Uh, let's see. Let me see here. Okay, so um, when you, okay, preliminary, we said begin the phone. Nick, how do you deal with leads? Okay, ghosting. What do you recommend to start hold? Okay, okay, so this is a, what is the best approach to assume the close one? Okay, this is a good one. What is, what is the best approach to assume the close when the sellers accepted the offer? This is a good question. No. Um, and I want you to look at the question you just asked. The best approach to assume the close when the sellers accepted. So you already closed them, because they've accepted the offer. So I'm assuming it's like, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, we could be at $120,000 cash. Would that work for you? Right? There's a bunch of buildup to that, by the way. That's just the ending. But I had, we had would that work for you? Oh, okay, that will work for me. Okay, great, great. Um, here's here's what, what I'm gonna do. What's your best email? And then you just take them down the process because once they're giving you that verbal commitment, now it's about getting, you know, the actual ink on a piece of paper. And so now you're gonna assume that they're ready to ink this today. So I would just start taking them down the process. If they say, if I say I can be at $120,000 cash, would that work? And they say, yeah, okay, great. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'll go ahead and draft up a two-page preliminary agreement. And then I'm literally drafting it up as I'm talking to them. Um, then I'm, I'm going to ask them some basic questions so they know that I'm drafting it up. Are you the only one on top? What's your best email? And then once I send them, I say, okay, Mr. Seller, did you know this guy's on that call? I said, hey, um, do you have a smartphone? Right? And I tried to go for the ink right now. You know what I mean? So the, I think the best thing to do is just to start taking them down the process. Assume that they're going to ink right now until they tell you otherwise. Until they say, hey. I know I'm ready to go at 120, but I'm not going to sound right now. I'm going to sound when I get home so I can look over the agreement. They say that to you, can't do anything. But you're just going to assume they're ready to ink right now. You know what I mean? It's like I, I, I assume that someone wants to sell. Everyone wants to sell to me until they tell me, Nick, I'm not selling my house. Or they say, Nick, I want a crazy amount of money. Everybody, every lead that comes into your system from your, from your marketing you should assume they want to sell until they otherwise tell you they don't. Any lead that goes into your CRM and that they don't pick up this day, they don't pick up, they don't pick up, they don't pick up for two weeks, they never get deleted until they tell you, I do not want to sell, or they're just outrageous on the pricing. So start, so start assuming everyone wants to sell and start assuming that everyone wants to um, is going to ink right now, especially after a verbal commitment. You know what I mean? After they the offer, there's no reason why you shouldn't get a signed contract if you assume it. Because, right, they gave you permission, like, I'm ready to go. So I love what you did. Is this something already moved forward today? We use that 100% as well because that basically 
they they commit themselves to it. It's not like we're even asking for it. They're telling us, right? We just want to make sure we confirm that commitment. And, and talking, like, like last little piece, um, yeah. and this is like something that is like I've noticed uh, with a lot of um, a lot of new, especially newer investors, a lot of my like my newer students uh, that are doing like one to three deals, you guys got to start expecting great things to happen. Start mm -hmm. expecting, right, that the leads you're calling back are ready to rock and roll today. Start expecting the sellers to agree. Start expecting them to like your offer. Start expecting, you know, you know, you to close X amount of deals. Because I think a lot of guys are going through the motion and they're going through the numbers, but the, the, the level of expectation just isn't there. And that's why they get the results that they get. Mm -hmm. I, when, I, when I talk on the phone, I expect them to be ready to rock and roll today. I expect them to be ready to sign today. I expect them to be able to, to get the whole thing going today. I expect it. So I attract it all the time. And these people can literally hear from my tonality and my conviction and the way I communicate that this guy is not bullshitting. He's a real investor. He does real deals. He's ready to buy this thing today because they can, they, it's almost like it's a vibration you're sending out that you're unsure and that's why they're unsure. But if you send out a level of vibration to saying like, hey man, I'm a, I'm a, I buy houses all throughout the area. I buy nice as conditional, fixing no parental maintenance with other commissions. I, I can definitely get it done. I love to do good business, love to do this. And they're gonna feel it and they're gonna be ready to rock and roll. Cause you gotta understand the decisions that these sellers are making they people sell three to five houses in their entire lifetime, right? These are big decisions. Average and ordinary people, they don't sell houses every single day. They just simply do not. So this is a huge decision. So if someone's making a huge decision, you damn well better be able to communicate. You damn well be, be, better be able to um, let them feel at ease because this is a $120,000 transaction, $200,000, $500,000 transaction. If you sound unsure, then I'm unsure. This is a big deal for me, selling a house. So you better not sound unsure on the phone because then I'm going to be unsure and I'm going to be, oh, well, call me next week. They won't trust you. It's a big thing for some people doing it for the first time. And if you don't have confidence through the phone, they're not they're not going to feel comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. and, and I just like to get better at that. Uh, I, I'm like a firm believer that repetition is just the mother of all skills. You know, you can, if you want to practice talking to sellers and you don't want to waste money or you want to, or you don't want to like, you know, you don't have a big marketing budget, get on Craigslist for sale by owner in every market that has it across the country and practice calling those leads, those for sale by owners. And, you know, I'm not saying they're going to be the best leads because they're not, but it's going to get you talking to somebody live on the phone. Repetition is the mother of all skills. So if you, and, and how do you get better? You just do it. Right. It's just like it's just like I mean, you're a boxer. Right. I mean, think about how many times you guys hit the damn speed bag. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I played baseball growing up. And how many times are we hitting wiffle balls Psh, and batting cage practice? Psh, you know what I mean? I was a place kicker in college. I mean, you know how many damn times we, you know, we practice kicking not just field goals, but just like the, you know, like the one steppers, the two steppers, the like the, you know, get in the pool. We get in the pool back in the day and swing our leg. You know what I mean? To practice, to get our legs stronger, go against the current. So repetition is the mother of all skills. Working your craft, the repetition. Yeah. So, Amazing, man. yeah, there it is. So awesome. anyways, um, good, great questions, by the way. Manifest and every lead on our CRM are ready to rock and roll. Thanks, Steve and Nick. Thank you guys so much, Nick. I really appreciate you hopping on here. Congratulations being the first guest to get a signed contract live. He showed you on the screen, so it's the real deal. Make sure you guys watch the replay. See how um, you know he put that together. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe if you guys felt this was very valuable. You know, share with your team. A lot of people that maybe you're kind of onboarding somebody else, and you kind of want them uh, to learn, like Nick style. You know, a lot of his style and stuff that we do is the same thing. So um, just make sure you guys a lot of repetition, just like he said. Implement everything. And uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Like and subscribe. Oh, incredible, everybody. Thanks for having me, Steven. God bless everybody. Lock up more deals. Let's get it.